All right, in this video, we are going to be learning about Newton's laws, which is also our introduction to forces. So hopefully, um, as we go through and look at these different Newton's laws, you'll kind of recognize, uh, especially the first law from the exploration activity we did in class. So Newton's first law, I'm going to refer to as the seatbelt law, and we'll find out why in a second here. Um, so Newton's first law states that an unbalanced force is required to accelerate an object. Uh, oftentimes this law gets stated as an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion. And then the last part that really always should be added to that but is often left out is the part where it's unless acted on by an outside force. So how this applies to like seat belts is you can see what the result of Newton's first law is this rider was on the motorcycle. The motorcycle crashed into the barrier made of tires. The motorcycle had a force acted on it. So the motorcycle was brought from being in motion to rest. Um, so the motorcycle was accelerated. But since the rider didn't hit the barrier, the rider continues on in the same motion uh, that he had previous. So he's thrown from the motorcycle. Same thing, obviously there's no seatbelts on motorcycles. But same thing when you're in a car, if your car is to hit something, if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you will continue in motion since there is no outside force acting on you. So you need that uh, to act on you. So that's a, it's a really important law. So in what we were doing in class, for example, when you pull the piece of paper out from underneath the beaker, the beaker is at rest and the friction of the paper on the beaker is not enough to really set that beaker in motion. Um, so even though it, it does interact with it some, it's not to, enough to overcome this. This is also called the law of inertia, um, and inertia is just a property of an object with mass. Inertia just basically means a resistance to a change in motion. Uh, Newton's second law, I'm going to call the airbag law, and we'll find out why in a second. So Newton's second law uh, tells us that the acceleration of an object is proportional, directly proportional to the sum of forces on an object, and indirectly proportional to the object's mass. So the second law is most easily said in this formula, F net equals MA, where F net, the net force means the sum of all the forces added together, so force 1 plus force 2 plus et cetera, et cetera, as many forces you have. Um, for those of us who aren't good at algebra, I have another super intelligent triangle that we can use when solving problems with F equals MA. Again, cover up the one that you're looking for, and then... The triangle will tell you to do with the other two. The reason why I call this the airbag law, so if you think about it, if you look at this equation F net equals MA, if you have a really big acceleration, so if A is a big number, then F needs to be a big number. If A is a small number, then F will be a small number. So if you think about hitting an airbag, you will slow down somewhat gradually, and so that means your acceleration is small, and if your acceleration is small, the force required to stop you is small. However, if your face hits the dashboard, you will change your speed of your face very quickly. Okay, And so the force required to stop your face will be extremely large. So that's why I'm calling this the airbag law. Um, getting a little bit into just how do we add forces to get the F net. So we're going to look at a couple situations here quickly. Uh, so imagine I'm trying to pull a crate. So on that crate, you might think of, well, there might be two forces on that crate. There's the applied force of the man pulling on the crate. And then there's the frictional force that acts in the opposite direction of motion on the crate. So if I want to add these two together, I line them up. And let's say uh, the forward force is, uh, is 10. Sorry, I'm not doing this on my whiteboard. I'm just doing this with a mouse trackpad. And the backwards force is 8. If the forward force is 10 and the backwards force is 8, the total force is going to be 2. Okay, Because basically 10 forward, we can think of as a positive 10. And 8 backwards, you can think of as a negative 8. So 10 plus a negative 8 is positive 2. Okay? Um, in physics, and actually in life, and there's actually more forces on this crate that we can talk about, but in physics and in life, there's... Problems often aren't 
that times aren't that simple. So if we look at this climber here trying to get up the mountain, there's lots of different forces on him. So there's the pull of the rope up, there's a the pull of gravity down. Um, he, there's the push of the cliff, so as his foot's resting against the cliff, the, the cliff is pushing outwards on the climber. Uh, if the climber's pushing downwards on the cliff, the cliff is pushing upwards on the climber, so as the climber's trying to go up. So all of these forces have to somehow be added together. Okay, so I'm just going to take a break from um, this presentation real quick to just take a look at how do we add forces? So I gave you an example um, already. If I have a force and that force is um, 10, okay, and then I take another force and I have that force go in the opposite direction and I say that force is 2, okay, see if I can, oh, maybe you have to, there we go, 2. If I want to add those two forces together, we talked about how the resultant force is 8. Okay, and again, the reason why it's 8 is if I take and line these forces up, and then when we add forces, we always do it head to tail. So the head of one arrow lines up the tail of the other. Um, and this is, I think, a little bit tricky to do um, because of the size of that arrow. But the green one really should equal the two put together. Okay, with the climber, if I've got all these forces, and again, we had a I'm having a hard time dragging them over here. Okay, so if I have an upwards force from the rope, and then I have a downwards force of gravity on the uh, on the climber. I remember where I'm clicking at. All right, and then I also have a sideways or a backwards force from the cliff, like was on that diagram, and then I have a up, slight upwards force of the rock face, is the fric force of friction upwards. If I want to add those all up, okay, I get an overall force the way I put it, like up into this the side, okay. So, um, and again, if I move all these around, where I put them all head to tail, of each one, assuming this program is working correctly, I should see how they all line up to give me this overall force, okay? So I have to take into consideration the directions, and when we add them up, we always put them head to tail, and we'll maybe practice a few, like maybe one or two of those like that on a worksheet. I'm to do an example problem with this Newton's second law. So if I say how much force does it take to accelerate a 50 kilogram person at a rate of 2 meters per second per second, just like what we've done in the past, first we want to line up what do we have to work with. We have F, M, A, K from the problem. So those are what we know and what we don't know. What's our relationship? How are they related? So F equals M, A. Plug in what we know, so F equals 50 kilograms times 2 meters per second per second. 50 times 2 is 100, and then here's all our units, kilogram meters per second per second. That gets really cumbersome, and so physics has a defined unit that we use for force, so we don't always have to say how many kilogram meter per second per second something is. And so a kilogram meter per second per second is defined as a newton, and so that would be 100 newtons. One, so a newton is a unit of force. So whenever you see something in newtons, it's a unit of force. Uh, and one newton is slightly under a quarter of a pound. So a newton is not a lot of force. So that 100 newtons is actually about 22 pounds. So a 50 kilogram person, if it would be about 110 pounds. Uh, would, if you wanted to accelerate rate at 2 meters per second per second, it would take about 25 pounds of force, or 22 pounds of force. Just to put them in, you know, terms that we're maybe a little bit more familiar with. But we don't want to do math in pounds because to try to do physics in pounds, it just gets confusing. Okay? 
Here's another problem. How much will the sled below accelerate? So if I look at this sled, so the, um, the parent is pulling the, the child forward. So there's an applied force, the one I put in green here, of 100 newtons. There's going to be some friction on the sled. So I'm going to say there's 50 newtons backwards. The uh, earth is pulling down through the force of gravity on the child in the sled. We'll say that the weight is 250 newtons. And then there's a normal force. So there's some upwards force pushing up from the ground. And we always forget about this one. But if this force wasn't here, that would mean the ground wasn't there and the child would be falling. And that certainly wouldn't be a very much fun sled ride. Okay? So if we look at how are we going to do this? Well, first, we know we need to know what is the sum of all these forces. Okay? So is the sum of the force, do I just take 100 newtons plus 50 newtons plus 250 newtons plus 250 newtons? Do I get the net force is 650 newtons? The answer is no. I can't just add all these numbers up because they're not all in the same direction. Just remember, like, if I have 10 plus a negative 10. So if we go back and we think about, um, you know, how are these all going to add up, okay? So if I had that 100 newtons forward, okay? So instead of 100, I'm just going to say 10 just so I don't have to make it more scale. Um, and if I have 50 newtons backwards, so again, I'm just going to go 5 instead of 50, okay, and on that object, if I then have 250, so we'll go up, see if we can get this up to 25, um, I guess i got to go up to the side here, so 250 up, and then I have another 250 down. Hopefully you can see that the 250 up and the 250 down are just going to cancel each other out. Okay. So if I add all of these up, what am I going to get? I'm going to get an overall force. Okay. That's just 5 newtons. So going back to here, um, it's not, or this sorry, was scaled down to 50 newtons. It's not 650 because these 250 up and down cancel out. And so if I add up the 100 minus... Um, 50, I'm going to get there's an overall forward force of 50 newtons. So if I put that in for F equals MA, I get 50 newtons equals 25 kilograms times A. So then my A is 2 meters per second per second. Alright, just a couple minutes left before I hit my 15 minute uh, mark. Newton's third law then is I'm going to call the careful getting out of the boat law or the fun with balloons law. So we can call it, we'll go either way with this one. So what this says is if a force is exerted on object A from object B, an equal and object opposite force will be exerted on B from A. Uh, sometimes we get this one gets said is for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, which isn't necessarily true, um, but you can think of that a little bit. So let's apply that to the canoe scenario. If I step out of the canoe, okay, then in order for me to move forward, something's putting a forward force on me. It's the canoe. The canoe is putting a forward force on me. If I put, if the canoe is putting a forward force on me, then I'm putting a backwards force on the canoe. So the canoe scoots out into the water. And if I'm not careful, I might end up in the water too. If you look at the balloon, if the balloon is putting a backwards force on the air, then the air is putting a forwards force on the balloon. This is what's meant by equal and opposite forces. Okay? So... Let's just look at another scenario of this. Alright, so let's say we have a cart being pulled by a horse. Okay, the horse come on, is pulling on the cart, so the horse is putting a forwards force on the cart. Okay, so this green arrow represents that forwards force that's on the cart. If the horse is pulling the cart forward, then the cart must be pulling the horse backwards. So this red arrow represents the force that's on the horse. Okay, so this is Newton's third law. For every however many Newtons of force the horse pulls the cart forwards with, the cart is pulling the horse backwards with the same amount of force. Now some people get confused and they look at this and they say, well how does the horse ever move forward then? Because these two forces should just cancel out. The key is they can't cancel out because they're on two different objects. Okay. So you have to take into account other forces like the force of the horse and the ground and whatnot. And that's as much time as I have. We can talk about this more in class.